Hi guys and welcome. Today we're going to make some beautiful paper doll slides, but I'm going to show you how to adapt it to the size of your um, paper dolls. So I've made a couple in advance just to show you that this method you can make any size at all. And I've done stamping on this one. This one was a scrapbook paper. I think it's Kaiser Craft from memory from the um, pen and ink collection, I think that one. And this one, um, just I've got a very small coffee stain stamp. So I've um, stamped that and I've distressed it and I've put a number down the bottom just with some mesh behind it. So there's so much you can do with these. I thought we'd um, jump in and make a couple now with you um, just to show you how easy it is and just to get your sizing um, for your measurements. I've pre-cut a couple and I've left a couple to do with you now so we might do her with the scrapbook paper so yes it's from the pen and ink collection so it's a Kaiser craft one it's, it's double-sided but that doesn't matter because we're only going to be using this side of it so I would get the paper doll that I want to use so in this case we're going to do this with this little girl and we're going to roughly do a bit of a measurement of her so she's roughly let's let and always go a little bit more than you need so we'll just say she's one and a half by four yeah maybe one and a quarter by four and then we want to add some width around that so when you've got um, a paper that's patterned like this, make sure that, you know, you're going to get the writing the right way. And in this case, we need it going across. So if she's, let's say she was one and a half, we want to at least go two and a half. And I'll leave my paper doll on there so you can see where the cutting line is. And I think we're going to have to go a little bit more because we want... Uh, 1.2 centimeter border and then that'll determine how big you want your borders so these ones a one centimeter and then another couple of little strokes on your ruler so 1.2 basically and we're going to need two pieces of this as well so let's get the length for her and again we'll take it up to might take it up to because you can cut a little bit off you want enough border plus a little bit enough border plus a, I'm going to take that to five so that piece of cardstock is five by two and three quarters so we've already got the two and three quarters cut because we did a long strip so we just need the length of it now at five so we'll just pop her off to the side put our cutting board off to the side always and with this make sure that you're going to put the two faces together because we're going to draw some lines on the back but we're not going to see them once we're finished so don't don't be worried about having to rub them out and then I just clip it together. Look, you don't have to clip it together. You could just you do the one page and then pin them together for the cutting. Entirely up to you. But I pin it at the start. And then just with a, a simple ruler, you got just your inches on one side, your centimetres on the other. And then we just go one centimetre plus two little lines. So 1.2. You can go wider if you wish. But you'll have to cut your paper bigger and then I just rule a line and that will be my cutting line and then 1.2 there is on this side now I always do two so you can keep the line straight And then again, so you do this on every side. And 
and you can apply this method to if you didn't want to do the slides uh, or the paper dolls you could do slides with you know butterflies or bugs or anything like that or you could just cut out frames from your decorative paper and use them in your embellishments it's a bit hard to line up when it's patterned And now we get a, a cutter, Stanley knife, a craft blade, whatever you've got at home. Now this one, it's got an automatically automatic spring on it. So I think that's for a safety measure method. I actually got this on Timu and it was only a couple of dollars. And I actually find the actual uh, size of it really comfortable. You've got to leave your thumb pushed with the blade out as you cut. And then the minute you let go, it just detracts like that. But yeah, it's really, really good. It's really lightweight. I've had it for a couple of weeks and um, I really, really like it. And then we're just gonna go along the lines. Now this is scrapbook paper, so it's not overly thick. Um, but when I do the cardstock in a minute, you really have to apply a little bit more pressure just to get through both layers. And you just take it to the point or to the line. I used to think making frames was really complex, but once you give it a go, and it's better if you cut together. Now, see, I've missed the line a little bit there, which doesn't matter because both of mine are going to be the same. But I will, because it's inside the line, I can go back again and take it to the line just to straighten it up. It's hard because I'm working with uh, my project out the front. I can't get my head over it because you guys don't want a headshot. So it's not going to be as perfect as if I had my head over the top of that <clears throat> but there it is instant frame now we also want to cut um, the window and I use acetate with mine um, which is um, it's, it's got a fairly good thickness to it and it's just called acetate it's clear you can use plastic anything you got really now I'm going to cut it smaller than the frame measurements so once again that was two and three quarters by five so two and three quarters I'm going to take it down half an inch so it'll be two and a quarter because I don't want it as wide but I do want it bigger than the um, the window. So we took it down half an inch, so we'll go to four and a half. And you'll need to cut two of those. So that's the little girl and just so so you can sort of see she fits inside the window like that and she's got a good space right around her so we're going to pop that one off to the side I'm going to do um, one more which is this tall gentleman to show you that it doesn't matter how big your paper doll is whether they're the mini ones the big ones you know the group ones you can apply this method to it as well we'll grab another bit of cardstock now let's measure him so he's roughly two inches by four and a half inches I might be able to get her Get around that 
links. Might need to go to three and a half for him. And like I said, you can always trim a little bit off it if you need to because you're going to have a border either side. So actually I might trim a little bit. I'm going to go a quarter. So it's going to be three and a quarter. That's better. And then we we'll give the same. Actually he might we might leave leave that length. So that's basically the width of the A5. And he may have a little bit more window around him because we're going to do the border the same size, but I think that'll be um, a good thing. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to cut the acetate. I want it shorter than the cardstock. Go four and three quarters. Go to the five actually, just to be sure. Five. You've got to cut two pieces of these. And then just down to three. windows cut for that and now we'll mark out so have a look if you're using cardstock like this this has got a beautiful front to it so I'm going to put it together so we want the back back of the card which is what we're going to write on and I'll just clip those together and we'll do the 1.2 centimeter again or if you want to call it mils 12 mils and do that on all sides Not sure whether you can hear it but we've got some beautiful rain just drizzling outside i hope it doesn't get too heavy because um i've got a temporary studio at the moment it's in a shed and the um, rain can sometimes get quite loud so i've sort of been waiting off all day for the rain to ease to do this video for you guys Always do two dots because that way you're always going to get a straight line. Because if I only had the one dot, even if it was down here, I could end up with a line like that. So we want to, the two lines, you can butt up against the ruler and you know you'll get a straight line every time. And then we want to get our craft blade again. And we're cutting on the line so because this is fairly thick 
cardstock. I think it's 300 GSM. I'm having to apply a little bit of pressure. Just to get through both layers. Yeah, so guys, if you shop on Timu, I've only bought a few things off them. But this little craft blade, I'm thinking about getting another one. Because obviously I, you can't, I don't think the, I don't think it's replaceable. So you get one blade, so you know it's going to wear out. But from memory, I think it was only a couple of dollars. And then pop him out, instant window. We've got our... Um, windows there which are just um, we might need to go a little bit bigger on those because I want uh, I want it to come out about halfway so I don't want it to come right to the edge just about halfway so we can put a bead of glue right around the window so I'll keep that for another paper doll and we will cut cut yeah. another one just to be sure, because we don't want to go to all this trouble because we're going to stamp this, um, cut it, stamp it, just to be a bit short on the window that we've um, cut. So that one's number six. Five, five and a quarter, I think, will go. Just a fraction over. And then the width again. Just a fraction under three. And cut two of them. And now measure them. Yep, yeah, that's heats better beautiful so we might work on him first then so pull out your stamps um, it doesn't matter what type of stamps you've got just to give it a little bit of a contrast of the background now I I just did various stamps with um, this one some numbers some post stamps some letters whatever you want I did do the back but you won't see the back um, but you could if you wanted to uh, which we might do with this one we might put some stamping on the back of him that way you've got a double side okay so we'll do that I'll grab some paper to put down so you might do this long number one on him so I'm using a mix of Tim Holtz stamps, AliExpress, ones I've had for years. So there's no set stamp set that I'm using, just a little bit of everything. I might throw a bit of script on him. And they do have a bit of a shiny background on these so it may take a little bit to dry but we can pop him off to the side and hopefully that'll dry by the time that we need to use use it and we will distress um, him as well just to give him a little bit of an outline so back to back to the frame so we take our clips off and then we know that when we open it up that's the front so that's the surface that we want to stamp on if you're stamping I'll just move my cutting mat from underneath so have a little bit of think about whether you know you want to uh, just do numbers or letters or a combination and 
pull some stamps out. I've got some here ready to go. So we might do some black script. And we're going to distress, I'll just check which way. Yep, so it's up the right way. And we're just gonna put some bits and pieces down. You can put as much or as little on this as you like. And it doesn't have to be the same. It's just, we're just doing random stamping. I'm gonna add some color. Find my red. And I'm using archival ink. Postage stamp. Once again, just random. This one's a receipt. Got a number. Doing that in, um, it's called coffee, this one, archival. And then I've got a little one that just says amount and it's got some random numbers on it that I did it in green on the other one I've got ink everywhere can't see the green but never mind we'll um have on I do have a a peat moss let's have a look at oh yeah it's a green we'll use that one I like it better actually. And then we just want to fill, we just want to, um, another stamp just to fill in some of these bigger um, spaces. But I am going to put some splatters on there. Actually, I might see if we can get some of these dates on there perhaps I'm just going to cover that over just so it doesn't So you can see it just fills it in and we just need something down there just put another 
example. A bit of a stamp on that, just on the received one. And then I'm going to get this um, splatter stamp. This one is um, a texture stamp from Darkroom Door. Absolutely beautiful. I use it all the time. Darkroom Door is an Australian company, but they do ship worldwide. And I do have them in my shop, guys. So the texture stamps, I just love them because they're small like that. And a lot of the times we're just adding a little bit of this and that. And I find it just brings it all together. I know that's hard to see because we've got this um, stamped scrap paper underneath but beautiful so now what we're going to do is we're going to ink distress ink the inside of the frame because when we stick the acetate on there it, it would be difficult we'd have to put a mask down and do it that way so this is the easiest time to do that So I'm using Ground Espresso. It's one of my favourites. It gives you a real, uh, it's like a real chocolate colour. And this is, um, this is new cream cardstock that I've come across. I've got it in my shop. It's Kaleidoscope Champagne is the name of it. It's just absolutely beautiful colour and it takes the ink really, really well. And I've got it in all size cardstocks. So I will be using it a lot. Okay, so we've inked the inside of the frame. Don't worry about the outside just yet. As we want to now stick our panels down, give them a bit of a clean paper crafting. There's always bits and pieces everywhere. So turn them over. And then we'll get our, I use art, art glitter, glue, and we just want to put a bead right around the outside. Now because effectively this is plastic, it does take a little bit longer to dry then paper to paper and then we just make sure we've got it relatively even around the outside and then we adhere it down so that's one done and then the same on this one And the reason I don't want the acetate to go right to the edge is because I want the glue to adhere cardstock to cardstock and it'll take a little bit to pinch around but you'll get a better adherence because on the plastic it, it will slip and slide for quite a while. So now this piece is the back. We want to Get our paper doll we're going to ink the back of him to stress him because we stamped him just as an extra feature there's no need to distress the front because they are literally dark enough 
and then I just put three little beads of glue like that not much at all we're just tacking it pop him in the middle and then we can run um, a line of glue right around this one towards the edge and then we're going to pop our front piece on And then just go around squeezing until the gl art glitter glue dries. Doesn't take long at all. But because we've got another thickness in there, which is why we have to keep pinching. We've got two thicknesses really. We've got two layers of the acetate. If you didn't want to have acetate on the background, you wanted a plain bit of um, cardstock or or a picture or a stamped background, then you can do that as well. I actually like the straight through window on these. You can put a eyelid in there, make them into tags. There's so much you can do with them. I'm going to leave them as is for this exercise, and I may do that later down the track as to how I use them in my journals. And then it's up to you as to whether you want to corner around those or not. I'm going to, I have on all the others. I actually like the rounded corner effect. When you do that, just, just be mindful, it would pay you to let your glue dry um, because it may slide out of place from the pressure of your corner rounder and sometimes corner rounders don't like glue or they don't like wet glue, <coughs> excuse me. So this one here, I'm just using a half an inch corner rounder. This one is an EK Tools. It comes in a set of two, a one inch and a half inch. I just love EK tools. I do have these in my shop as well, guys, and I'll put a link down, down the bottom, but use them all the time. I actually use the one inch more than the half an inch, so which is why I've pulled out the half an inch one today to use in this exercise. And because the I haven't done, you know, thick borders, I think the smaller rounded corner looks better and I'll ink the back I really love the stamped image on that guys so that'll be something I'll be doing going forward just gives it a little bit of contrast and I'll show you I'll show you what I mean this is our uh, my prototype I did this morning so look at the the two backs you can see the dobs of glue there which I mean these are I'm I'm going to put in a journal not you know have them as a pull out sort of thing they might be a pocket but if it's a tag and you want to pull it out then by all means stamp or do something on the back because that looks awesome love it so that's your finished tag there. So we'll pop that one off. So that's stamping with all your various different stamps. So we might do another one. Let's do this beautiful little girl. And I've already pre-cut everything. So it's going to be a fairly quick exercise. So we want to ink, ink the inside first before we stick the acetate on. I think we'll put some lace and buttons on this one just for something a little bit different and she's very girly girly so we'll give her a little vintage photo frame
So if you didn't have cardstock like this, you could get your script stamp out and just script it in, um, it looks like a gray or a dark brown, not necessarily a black. Okay, and then flip, flip these over. And we wanna put the acetate on. That's one, and we'll do the other one. That's two. Now well, we're going to stamp her, but I might do just a script on her, just in this coffee colour. And like I said, just be careful because I should have inked her prior. Because it's a shiny, these paper dolls are on a very shiny surface. It takes a while to... Dry. And just three little beads of glue because we're only tacking it on just so she stays in place. Get her in the center. And then a line of glue around the outside. So you can see now that you know sort of how to adapt the size to whatever you're working with, whether it's a paper doll, a flower, a butterfly. You don't need to have, a, you know, a bit of ephemera to fit inside your, um, there was a little bit of paper in there to fit inside your windows that you make. You can now make your windows to fit all your embellishments and your ephemera. And then we're pinching it around the edge because we've got two layers of acetate under there. And art glitter glue dries fairly quickly, which is why we're doing it cardstock to cardstock. We haven't made the acetate the full size so you can see her just adds a little bit of interest if you're going to be using both sides <coughs> I'm going to round the corners and I know it's still a little bit wet so around it doesn't necessarily like me I got it stuck this morning so I have to bash it a little bit to um, bash it a little bit to make it come apart because it had stuck together and then we just go around and distress the outside And we might put a bit of lace on the bottom of her. Just to give it, you know, just a little bit of something extra. I'll show you the one I did with the ladies because, you know, it's fairly, they're fairly pale paper dolls, those ones. They're not the dark ones. So we need to just um, 
you know, keep it soft, but just add a little bit of something extra on there. So I'll just grab a bit of lace. a little strip off there this is a um, doily that I picked up at an op shop so I just I just cut it as I need it I'm just going to cut the circle out of this this one because I want to put a button on so I just want to have a little bit of a frame for the button Let's see what buttons I've got flower button so you might um, use that that one and then what I'm going to use here it's similar to fabric glue it's 450 quick dry adhesive by Helmer and it's really good at fixing material to cardstock so you know two different mediums so I'm just grouping that around a little bit there And I am getting to the end of this bottle. So I'll just pop a bead, bead of glue down there and put the glue the button on. Of course you can sew it. just hold it with a bit of pressure just for a minute you could also put a date or a word or something out the side but I actually like just a little bit of lace there let's see let's see if a leaf I'll cut a leaf off and see if we can add a leaf to it. Maybe, maybe not. I like that one there and the other one I'll have to see if I can pull that circle frame up a little bit to get it under so then I can slip under like that and that one yes I can Now, if you didn't have, um, you know, that type of thing, the flowers or leaves or that, look to a die or a punch, hand cut one. And that's that one, guys, absolutely beautiful. 
thinking I might just put another little piece off the edge. Maybe. Yep, so if I can lift that up a bit. Sometimes you don't know if it needs a little bit of extra until you finish and then, then you just make work for yourself. Oh, we just need a little bit extra coming off, off the edge there, as you can see. Absolutely beautiful. A bit of glue on there. Yep, super cute. So we'll pop that one off to the side. Okay, so let's have a, a look at another one. So we've got two to choose from. I've got the boys. We might do the boys. We might do um, that stamping with the coffee. So open them up to make sure that you get the right cover. That's why pinning them together is always a good idea and then keeping them so you know what side's what side because they're never ever going to be perfect when, when you hand cut anything. So we're going to stamp on there. So I've got, but I might do it lighter this time. I'm still going to use the coffee archival ink and I'll just show you on the paper we go stamp stamp and then just get that really light I've got a scrap bit of um, cardstock here so we'll see mm, maybe we do need to do the dark because the light's going to be fairly faded we'll go the dark stick with the dark and just put some around this is um, this is just a little cheap stamp I think it was Aliexpress this one and it's it's really got um, a few different of your coffee rings but it's um, their miniature, but the actual stamp set is massive. I think Globeland um, put it out, which they do a lot of the AliExpress um, stamps. Oh, and then we want some splatters as well. So I'll find my splatter stamp, which is out of the same set. Beautiful. And then we'll ink the inside with the ground espresso. I'm going to do a bit more with some frames because I actually like the idea of frames not with the uh, not necessarily with the acetate but so you know a frame like that or that size you could put an embellishment on the corner here and it can be like a cluster really a frame cluster I have ink tea outside this time around got carried away but that doesn't matter I'll just re-ink the corners when I use the corner rounder
Okay, so then we turn it over and we glue our acetate down. So go out, try and get relatively even distance all the way around. Don't go too thick on the glue. You don't want it seeping onto the window. And I haven't stamped the back of this one. We're leaving this one plain. So two little guys. And then just a bead of glue around the cardstock border. Try and get rid of all the, the fluff and the smudges because once you glue it down, it literally is too late. May have got turned around at some stage, that's better. When I was inking. Just keep pinching around the edge. This one's slightly off center. Just trying to squeeze it over a bit. That's better. With the acetate there, you do get a little bit of time to play, um, but you don't normally get that with the art glitter. It dries fairly, fairly quickly. those corners front and back. That's that one. So we might put um, something down the bottom similar to what we did with this guy. We put a number down the bottom but we might put something maybe in the corner. Let's let's just put the pin in the glue and let's have a look at maybe a label. So if we've got a little bit of hessian, we might give it like a bit of a corner. Do a little bit of a cluster down here maybe. Something like that. Maybe a little label or a number. Actually a number would be good. Let me have a look.
so that ephemera holder guys i have a video on that if you want to make one of those um they are relatively they are a bit of a mission to make but um not in a hard sense like there, there is a lot of work in them um i did have one in my etsy shop it's just sold which is the one i made on the video but i will be putting more in there i just got to get around to um getting them made i do have them started so keep an eye out for that but yeah definitely have a go um, at one yourself it's the same principle as making a journey but, uh, sorry a journal and i do have all the measurements in there for it as well okay so we need a little bit of something else there maybe a bit of sari silk So we're just doing like a little basically a little cluster just as a little point of interest i do like that actually i do like that as well and i like it how it's obscured like that all right so let's get our 450 quick dry i'm just going to run a bead around the edge so you can literally put anything on these you can leave them plain and decorate them later and just have a few of them in your stash ready to go think about with this one think about where you need to stick it because I'm not sticking the whole surface of it down so I normally when I don't want something glued I'll put my finger on and then just glue the other so I do want a little bit more glue under this end but I didn't want to put glue on the acetate on the window so as you can see it's just a little point of interest but it just adds to it so you know little clusters down in the corner or like I did with the other one a number or a name or a date across the bottom we've got one more to do which is a couple of ladies so let's do that one as well already got it pre-cut fold it open and distress so this is using that Kaiser craft card stock again from pen and ink collection and when you're using script just make sure it's up the right way So I'm just going to distress the back of the ladies. I'm not stamping. <coughs> Turn it over and then we're going to put our acetate on there. over like that same on the other side lovely we're going to glue the ladies on so just a couple of beads of glue don't have to do three I just tend to do everything in threes for some reason And 
and then we're going to stick the cardstock to the cardstock or in this case paper to the paper so this one's a little one so you can see exactly the same principle you can make them any size you want guys so it's a good good method to have in your your repertoire or if you know if you use an ideas book write it in there but your measurements basically are taken off and you always allow your your frame taken off the size of you know what you want framed So we might use some labels with these ladies as well. I'll just distress the outside. Make sure we've got a corner round first. And just by having them distressed, that looks good too. So that's another thing you can do if you didn't want to stamp. So I do like the sari silk. have it across the bottom there so we'll glue that one down first let me use the 450 quick dry think a little bit of um, might use a little bit of hessian on there as well just going to put one line across there it will come through that we can um, you know put over the top what we want to put over the top. I actually like that one, but I think I might put a bit of twine behind it. So just do a a few wraps around the fingers just to get some loops happening sort of like a bit of a bow I'm not going to tie it <laughs> so I'm going to put a bit of a dollop of glue there and I'm going to press that down into it just to give me a little bit flatter surface than a knot and then I'm going to have the accounts due label over the top which I believe this one is a Tracy Fox um, you'll find her Etsy shop under Love Junk Journals um, and she does some amazing work. I've bought a, a, a fair bit off her of late. So I'll just hold that down for a minute. I'll move this 
piece of scrap away so we can um, do a recap of what we've done today. And like I said, you can put an eyelet in the top there and you can put some string or ribbon out the top. You could put um, a bulb pin, um, absolutely beautiful. That, that could even be, you know, the front of a pocket or front of a journal. So we've got, um, you can see different sizes, same paper, different sizes. Remember the 1.2 centimeter or 12 mil borders, you can go thicker if you want to. I actually want to highlight the pictures more so than the borders, but totally up to you. You know, a bit of string, bit of lace down, bit of a cluster down in the corner there. Then we've got our guys with our coffee stain stamp that we used. You could even just do splatters, entirely up to you, numbers. And then we've done a label cluster down the bottom of these guys. And with this gentleman, we've just stamped a number on the same cardstock, made a little bit of a, a banner type of thing, distressed it and put it over some mesh. And we've got our beautiful little girl. We put some buttons and lace with her because she's really girly girly. Um, you know, you could even stamp something around there if you wish and then we've got our two gentlemen where we pulled out you know all different types various stamps and we did you know a bit of a collage i guess um for the guys and um you know we stamped stamped the back so we got a, a contrast if we were going to make that into a tag and and pull it out we've got something both sides as opposed to the plane but there you go guys i hope you got a lot out of that just um an exercise to show you that make your frames around what you want to frame so you don't have a set uh, measurement for them you just go a little bit out from the size of your piece that you're framing for your window and then your 1.2 mil or however you know width you want on that and you do that top and bottom so you can get basically a good clear window around all your projects but as you can see we've done um, no one is the same size because we've tailored it to the bit of the embellishment or the ephemera that we've been working with there you go guys i hope i've inspired you today and you've really enjoyed today's video if you haven't already please subscribe um, hit like and don't forget to do the notification bell so every time I load one up um, you'll be notified of it. Thanks guys and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!